Okay, continuing with the use substitution examples, uh, we got, I think, four more on this page, and then uh, probably like five or six on the next page. All right, well, let's go for it. Here I've got cosine of 3x. Uh, I know to integrate a cosine, the original function, it's going to be a sine. Uh, but I also know, hey, like if my if you're trying to figure out what's your original function uh, so that the derivative is cosine 3x, we know the original must have been a sine 3x. Uh, but if your original was sine of 3x, then the derivative would have been a 3 cosine 3x, right? Uh, if this was your original, chain rule tells me a 3 would kick out to the front. But if that 3 is supposed to be there, but it's not, that means your original function must have a 1 over that number to make it cancel, right? So we know this would be the original function, right? You're kind of just working your way backwards, just doing some pattern recognition. What's supposed to be there? Since it's not there, okay, a 1 over it on the original would make it cancel. How you actually do that with u-sub, it's like this. The, the argument of the trig, the inside stuff, that's your u. Take the derivative would be 3, and then kick over the dx, 3dx. Now, you don't have 3dx, you just have the 1dx. Uh, so that means 1 third du would be equal to dx. Then I could substitute it all over. Uh, the integration symbol is still the integration symbol. And then the differential dx, you're going to change it. You have the du, but you also have this extra 1 third, which I'm going to put out in the front. And then I had cosine of 3x, so that's going to switch and be cosine of u. And then I can integrate one third coefficient, just copies. The integration of cosine is sine plus c. And then you would need to reverse substitute one third sine of 3x. And then, of course, plus c. Again, you could check it by taking a derivative, but it's going to work. To account for the 3 that was supposed to be there, but was not, your original function just had a one third. Right? So when you. It's kind of it's kind of like the opposite of, of u sub, right? You think, what's the derivative of this inside piece? Well, three. And if you were taking a derivative of that trig expression, well, that three would multiply to the front. Really, we're undoing a derivative, right? So that chain rule derivative, the three, it's going to divide to the front. So it kicks out a one third. Lots of different ways to think about it. I think the way I have it, generally students don't hate too much. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We got x squared secant squared of x cubed. That one looks tricky. Remember, secant squared is fine. Secant squared is the result of a tangent derivative. So the secant squared doesn't bother me. What is a little bit troublesome is that I've got the x cubed and I've got this extra x squared out in the front. So which one do I set as the u? Well, the one inside of the trig. Here your u would be x cubed. Again, I know it's an integration question, but the first thing you do is take the derivative. Uh, if u is x cubed, the derivative is supposed to be 3x squared dx. I've got the x squared. I've got the dx. That's good. I'm missing the 3. Uh, so there is a relationship between these two chunks. One of them is the derivative of the other, but instead of it matching perfectly, it's off by a constant. And it's okay to be off by a constant. We can live. To account for that 3 that was supposed to be there but was not, it just means there was a one-third on my original function that made it cancel. Okay, so if du is equal to 3x dx, that means one-third of du is equal to x squared dx. So now the x squared and the dx, that's all going to change. And you've got the one-third du. So the x squared and the dx, all that's gone. It's changed into your one-third du. Then I had secant squared of stuff. Now, secant squared is not a problem. Secant squared is just the, the derivative of tangent. So the integration of secant squared is going to be tangent. Don't forget about the one-third. Don't forget about your plus c. And then don't forget, don't leave your answer with u's. Reverse substitute it. One-third tangent of x cubed plus c. It's been a while, so let's let's check it, right? Check it by taking a derivative. The one-third just copy. If you have a tangent, the derivative would be a secant squared of that stuff. But then that inside stuff, you would need to account for, and the constant would be zero. The one-third and the three would cancel, but you would be left over with the secant squared of x cubed, and you'd have that extra x squared, which is what we uh, began with, right? So you can always check it by taking a derivative. But these u-sub questions, they're either kind of repetitive, 
Uh, you'll, you'll eventually kind of get the hang of it, though. They're not too bad. Could be much worse. If you take a calculus 2, or if you're in calculus B, uh, calculus B, C, BC, can't speak, uh, it will get worse. We learn much harder techniques of integration. U substitution is kind of just like the easiest. Uh, but anyways, let's keep going. Next example, I've got sine cubed 5x times cosine of 5x. So I've got both trig chunks. This one is something that you could break it down. You could set the u as 5x, do that first substitution, and then you could do a second substitution and say v equals, like you could do it with two subs, but that's silly. Just do it all at once. Just think which trig, either the sine chunk or the cosine chunk, which trig has something happening to it. And that's the one that's causing chain rule, which for me, it's the sine. Okay, so the sine is being cubed. That's the one that's causing chain rule. The cosine, that's the one that was the result of chain rule. So the one that's being cubed, that's the one that I'm going to set as u. Let's take the derivative. The derivative of sine 5x would be 5 cosine 5x. Don't forget your dx. Uh, so I've got the cosine, which is good. I've got the dx, which is good. I'm missing the 5. Okay, to account for the 5 that was supposed to be there but was not, it just means your original is going to have a 1 fifth to make it cancel, right? If du is equal to 5 cosine x, uh, cosine 5x dx, uh, if that 5 is supposed to be there but it's not, divide by it, your original is going to have a 1 fifth. All right, so I identify the u, take the derivative. This is what's supposed to be there. Here's what there actually is uh, in your integration. You just divide by 5, do the same thing on the left. Let's switch it all over. All this stuff that's underlined, the cosine 5x dx, that's going to be equal. I'm going to substitute it, and it's going to change to 1 fifth du. The integration symbol is still the integration symbol. All this stuff that I underlined, that's 1 fifth du. And then what's left over, I had sine of 5x. Remember all that. You had sine of 5x. All that was getting cubed. So what's left over is just u cubed. You don't have a sine, right? The sine was part of the u. Uh, so, so there we go, right? We had a product to begin with, which you can't integrate because there's no product rule. But when you reverse uh, or when you substitute it all and change it all to that equivalent expression for u's, now that's a very basic integration. Don't forget about the one-fifth. But I can add one to the exponent, divide by the new number, and then when I switch it over to use, it's it's really easy. So it's kind of annoying. Switching it all to use is a little bit tricky. But the reason why we do it is because once it's switched over to use, that integration is possible. There is no rule when it's multiplication. So you have to switch it over to simplify it. Even though jumping through all the hoops to switch it can be a little bit tough, uh, you, you would want to, to switch it over to use. All right, 5 times 4 is 20. So I got 1 20th that I'm going to have. Uh, your sine, I guess you don't really need those. I got 120, uh, 120th u to the fourth power, so it's going to be sine to the fourth power of 5x uh, plus e. Okay, one of the hardest things about the, the u substitution is picking the correct u, because if you don't pick the correct u, then all the pieces won't fit together and this little puzzle of an integration won't work, right? Uh, so if you had tried to do it backwards, if you had tried to set the u as cosine 5x, the derivative would be negative 5 sine 5x dx, right? So check it out. If that was uh, the u substitution, you could account for the 5 by being not being there. That's okay. You could account for the negative not being there. That would be okay. But if your u is a cosine, just one of them, right? So the cosine would be gone. It's accounted for. It's u. Uh, and then you could account for one of the sines, right? You have a sine, uh, sine 5 x dx. You could account for one of the sines, but then there would still be two more. So you would end up with something like this, negative 1 fifth. You would still have a sine squared of 5x. Uh, and then you'd have your u du. So if you try to set your u as something incorrect, it's not all going to switch. You'd end up with this stuff. You still have x's and u's, and you would never, ever want to have x's and u's at the same time. It's all x's to begin with. You switch it over so that it's all u's. Then when you integrate it, the final answer should switch back, and you reverse substitute it to all x's. But you should really never have x's and u's at the same place or in the same line. 
Okay, so if you try to pick the, the incorrect U, uh, it should fall apart, and, it, and your integration is not going to fit together. It's not going to work. Uh, similarly, sometimes students will try to do too much. Like if you set the U as sine cubed of x to the fifth, well, let's we'll see what happens. Your derivative would be 3 sine squared times cosine times 5, right? That would be a three-layer composite. You've got something cubed, then you've got the sine of something, then you've got the 5x. Uh, if you set all of this as u, let's see what would happen. Now, remember, if all of this is u, we'd have the integration symbol, we'd have u, but then all, all we have, right, we have the cosine 5x dx. We, we could be okay missing the 5. That's okay. Uh, I would have this, but if I use all of the sine cubes, if I use all three of those for u, um, I would need two more, right? Because the derivative, the du, would require another sine squared. And you could account for the three. That's okay. That could kick over also. Uh, the cosine you had, but you only had one of them. Uh, you only had three sines. If you use all three of the sines for the u, then you would need two more for the derivative. Uh, so, so that would be a problem. I don't even know how to switch it over. It wouldn't work, right? You basically have to think, what extra stuff do I have? I have one extra cosine. So since I have one extra cosine, what could I set for the u so that the derivative, the du, only has the one extra cosine? And if the number doesn't match also, that's fine. We can always account for that. Uh, but since you only have the one cosine, you don't want to set the u as, as sine cubed because then your derivative would require too much stuff. right? So if you don't pick the correct u, you're going to hit a roadblock, and it may seem kind of like you're, you're getting frustrated and you're getting stuck, well, it's because you're not starting the question correctly, right? So these ones can be a little bit tricky, but the more you practice, the better you'll get. It's all about pattern recognition. Here's one chunk, the sine of 5x. There's its derivative. You need to set the u as something so that its derivative is either going to match something else in your integral or is only off by a constant. If you pick a different u, it's not going to work. Okay, moving on. Next one. We've got x cosine to the fourth sine, and then inside the trigs we've got x squared. And it looks like I've got an extra sine, and it looks like I've also got this extra x. So I need to somehow pick a u so that the derivative is going to have one sine and is going to also have this extra x. Uh, but we've got the trig that's getting raised to the fourth, so let's try that. Let's try cosine, not to the fourth, but let's try just the cosine, right? We only have one extra sine, so I only need the u to be one cosine. Let's try it. The derivative, come on, pencil, hold on. Centimeter of lead, so of course it's not going to work. If the, d, if the u is cosine, right, this chunk, if the u is cosine of x squared, the derivative would be negative 2x sine of x squared, right? The derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then that 2x would kick out because of the chain rule, the derivative of the inside piece. Uh, I don't have the 2. That's a problem, but it's an easy problem. A 1 half on your original can account for the 2 that's missing. I also don't have the negative. That's okay. Move it over, right? If your derivative is supposed to be negative, you can account for it being missing by, by having your original function have it instead. Now, you do have the x, which is important. You do have the sine. You need all the variable part to match. The constant and the negative doesn't matter. Uh, and, of course, we have the dx. So all this stuff that's underlined, all of that stuff you could change to a negative one-half du. Right? So all this stuff that's underlined, the x, is going to go away. This stuff's all going to go away, and it just substitutes into your negative one-half du. So the integration symbol has been accounted for, the x, and all this stuff has been accounted for. What's left over is the cosine of stuff to the fourth, but remember the cosine was your u. So all that's left is u to the fourth. So it starts off with this really nasty product, but there is no product rule. However, when you jump through the hoops of switching it all to u's, now that's easy, right? One-fifth u to the fifth plus c. Like, that's not too bad. Be careful. A lot of times students will have it, and then they won't have it. Uh, they won't copy it in the next, right? They'll do all the work and be like, hey, negative one half. That's what it's off by. But then for some reason, when they switch it to use, they'll just drop it. Or sometimes when they have it, uh, when they integrate, they get so caught up actually integrating 
that that they're going to kind of drop off that constant. Uh, be careful, right? Figure out what it's off by, put that out in front of the integration symbol, and make sure that doesn't just disappear. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, we'll, we're going to be good. We're going to have a negative one tenth u to the fifth. So we're going to have a cosine to the fifth of x squared plus c. That would be your original function, which gives you this as the derivative. Okay, another common mistake that I see is for people to do all this correctly, and then they switch it over so they got negative one half u to the fourth du, but then they just tell me, okay, Mr. Bell, the answer is negative one, uh, one half cosine to the fourth x squared. People will do stuff like this. Um, what they're forgetting is to actually do the math in this question. It's to actually do the one calculus step. Uh, you did all this work, you switched it over to use, but you need to integrate, right? You don't reverse substitute yet. You have to integrate and then reverse substitute. Don't forget to actually do calculus in the calculus question, right? So be careful. There's lots of opportunities for mistakes with u sub. Got to figure out if the, if the derivative doesn't match, okay. If it's off by a constant, if it's off by a negative, that's fine. Figure out what it's off by. Make sure that gets copied over. Make sure you don't drop that. Uh, and then at the end, just kind of collect all the coefficients together. Uh, make sure you put the plus c. Make sure you reverse substitute back to x's. Uh, another thing w would be something like this, right? If you have u to the fifth, when you switch your u back, make sure that thing is getting raised to the fifth, right? So lots of opportunities to make a mistake. Please just be careful. Just ask yourself, what would Mr. Bell do, right? What does is, what is his work look like in his answer keys? And then as a general rule, if you make your answers look like my answers, you're probably doing it right, right? Uh, I, I try to emulate a good process for you to follow. There are other ways that you can do use substitution. I find the way that I teach it, generally students find it the, the most acceptable, the most palatable, the least terrible, whatever, uh, whatever perspective you want to put on it. All right, let's go through five more examples, then we'll be done. About time. All right, so I've got two chunks, the x squared plus 4, and I've got the x. Which one's causing chain rule? Which one was the result of chain rule? Well, that one's got something happening to it, right? It's a cube root. So that's the one that you have to set as u. Also, you can see the x. That's the derivative piece, right? That's the one that was the result of chain rule. Uh, this is the one that was actually causing chain rule for your original function. So identify the u. Take the derivative. That's what's supposed to be there. I don't have it. All I have is the x dx. So figure out what do I have to do to go from what it was supposed to be to what it actually is. Well, you're going to have to divide by 2. Therefore, 1 half of du is equal to x dx. So I've got 1 half. Then I've got the 1 du on the top, the cube root on the bottom. The cube root on the bottom, you could rewrite it as u to the negative 1 third power. So it starts off as a quotient, but there is no quotient rule for integration. But when you switch it all over to being defined by use, now that's pretty okay, pretty doable, it's just a power rule. Add one to the exponent, and then divide by that new number. Don't forget your plus c. Then recombine all this, that's going to be a three-fourths. Reverse substitute. So put it back to x's x squared plus 4, and then of course don't forget your plus c. Okay, you can check it by taking a derivative, but when you take the derivative, it's going to give you x over the cube root of x squared plus 4. All right, moving on, next one, we would set the x cubed as u. So then the derivative is supposed to be a 3x squared dx. I've got the x squared. I've got the dx. Don't have the 3. That's okay. Just divide it over. One third of du. By the way, sometimes I'll do it in two steps. Sometimes I'll write in three. Doesn't matter. Whatever makes you feel warm and fuzzy. Uh, I, I would really suggest that you do some type of the scratch work, either the three steps or you can do it in two. Uh, but I, I just generally find that when students don't write this down, they will usually make a silly mistake. Uh, so just I don't know, take the extra 10 seconds to write it, you're going to cut out a lot of careless mistakes, you'll lose a lot uh, a lot less points. So that was what the derivative was supposed to be. 
make it to what it was, uh, it's going to kick out a one-third. So then the x squared and the dx, all of that's going to change to your one-third and your du. Then I had sine of that stuff. And then I can integrate it. I know the integration of sine is negative cosine. Remember, if it, if it was a, if you thought it was a positive cosine, check. Is the derivative of cosine positive sine? No. The derivative of cosine would have been negative sine, since that negative was supposed to be there but was not. Must have been on my original function instead. So here we go, negative one-third cosine of x cubed plus c. That was not the result of a quotient rule derivative. This was not the result of a product rule, right? Both of those uh, would require a chain rule when you take the derivative. So we're undoing chain rules, which is some quotients and some products, uh, but we're undoing chain rules. That's what u substitution does. Okay, a couple more. Next one, I have cosine 3x, and that chunk's getting raised to the fourth. Then I have the sine of uh, 3x kind of just waiting. Here are the u you're going to set as the cosine, not cosine to the fourth, not cosine squared. All you have extra is one sine, so all you need for the u is one of the cosines. And then your derivative is supposed to be a negative 3 sine 3x. Uh, you don't have the 3, that's okay, right? Here's what it was supposed to be. Here's what you actually do have, just the sine of 3x dx. You've got the, the important stuff. You've got the variable part that matches. Uh, you're missing the 3, you're missing the negative, but a negative one-third on your original can account for all that stuff being missing. Okay, so switch it all over to being use. Then you can integrate it. And then recombine and reverse substitute. So here I'm, I'm smelling a negative 1 15th, something to the fifth power. So I'm going to have a cosine to the fifth power, uh, and then plus c. This u sub stuff can be quite pleasing once you understand it, because it's, it's very mechanical. The process is kind of the same. Every question is different, of course, but it's kind of repetitive in the motions. Identify that you take the derivative, make it match, switch it over. Then you integrate. Don't forget the plus e. Then you reverse substitute. Don't forget to drop the constant anywhere. Don't forget that ex exponent's happening. Uh, it's kind of like a nice feeling whenever you get it and it makes sense, but it can be very troublesome at first. So just keep practicing. Ask me questions if you need help. Uh, but u sub, it's important. All right, next one. I see all sorts of stuff. I see an x cubed. I see a sine to the seventh. I see uh, x to the fourth inside of the trig, and I got the cosine. What can I pick for the u so that all of the extra stuff will somehow magically all go away and it'll fit together nicely? Well, on this question, all you need is just the sine of x to the fourth. Why? Because when your u is x, uh, sine of x to the fourth, your derivative would be 4x cubed cosine x to the fourth, right? The derivative of sine would be cosine, chain rule would kick this out. Uh, so let's see, the x cubed, got it. The sine, you've got it. The dx, of course, you've got it. The only thing you're missing was the four. Okay, no biggie, kick it out. I got the one fourth, and then this, and this, and this, all that stuff that's underlined, uh, that's gonna switch to the one fourth and the du. And then I had sine of stuff to the seventh power, so all you have left over is u to the seventh power. Look at that, right? It looks so complicated in terms of x. It takes a little bit of hoop jumping to make it into u's. But once you have it into u's, look how easy it is to integrate 1 8th u to the 8th plus c. And then we can get this answer. 1 over 32 sine to the 8th power of x to the 4th plus c. If you don't like writing it like this, you're more than welcome. Uh, you could just rewrite it as sine of x to the fourth uh, to the eighth plus c. Like, it's fine. Like, you could just leave this. You could go back from the u, change it back, uh, and then just have all that, that eighth to on the outside. That would be fine. Uh, but a lot of the times, the AP exam is going to put it back on the trig. Okay, one more example. 
and then we're done. It says solve the differential equation. Remember, that just means here's your derivative. That's y prime. Tell me what is the original function. So solve the differential equation means integrate. Tell me what the original function is. So integrate. Uh, so let's integrate both sides. Really, you would kick the dx over. And then you would integrate the left with y's. Uh, integrate the right with x's. You just integrate, right? So y is going to be the integration of 9x squared over square root of 1 plus x cubed plus 5x dx. Okay, so I've got to integrate. That's what, you, that's what it means. Solve the differential equation. Tell me what the original is. Now, here you've got addition and subtraction. Uh, but what you can do is, is just split it up. Instead of having uh, both pieces in the one integral, you're welcome to just split it up. I have this first piece plus the integration of the second piece. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted by the announcements. All right, just got to finish this last one. And then we'll be done. Hooray, we'll be done. Okay, so we separated it out. Remember, solve the differential equation means integrate. Tell me what the original function is. Uh, since it's addition, it gets split up. Integrating the right piece is easy. That has nothing to do with u sub. That one's going to integrate just using the power rule. But we will need to use u sub for this left piece. Right. I'm going to do the right one just to finish it and be done with it. Right? Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new number. That's great. And I'm going to put the plus c on the right. Since we're only undoing one derivative, right? we have the, the, the first derivative we're integrating to get up to the original function. Since you're only integrating and undoing one derivative, you're only going up one level, we only need the 1 plus c. Even though this splits up into two parts, you don't need a plus c and a plus d. You don't need two constants. Uh, even if you, like, think about it. If you had a polynomial, like terms, uh, a function that had multiple terms, you would just integrate each piece, but then at the end, you would still just have the 1 plus c. It doesn't matter how many terms it has. It matters how many derivatives you're undoing, how many times you integrate. Since we're only integrating the once, you only need the 1 plus c. All right, let's do the u sub for this part. The u would be 1 plus x cubed. The derivative in a perfect world would be a 3x squared dx. Ooh, this is kind of one of the, the rare examples where uh, instead of it being too small, right, instead of instead of you're supposed to have a 3, but it's missing, uh, the 3 actually got turned into a 9. All right, well, that's okay. Just think, this is what it was supposed to be. That's what the derivative is in a perfect world. That's what the numerator would be. Here's what it actually is, the 9x squared dx. To turn the 3 into a 9, you're actually going to kick out a 3, right? You're not going to divide by the 3 to turn the 3 into a 1. You're going to actually multiply by 3. Uh, so this one would actually be a 3... 1 over the root of u, du. All this stuff on the top would be 3 du, right? All that stuff on the top is 3 du. Then you have the square root on the bottom. So you have 3, and then u to the negative 1 half, uh, which I can integrate, 3. And then if I add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new number, it's going to end up giving you 6 u to the 1 half. OK, so let's find room for this answer. We got 6 u, reverse substitute it, 1 plus x cubed to the 1 half. Uh, that's going to be the answer for this first part. And then we had the rest of it, plus the 5 halves x squared plus c. That's all the original function. That's what y would be equal to if dy dx, if the derivative is this. Remember, solve just means tell me what the original function is, integrate it. Part of it needed u sub, the other part didn't. So you could split it up. Use u sub for one part. Uh, regular old power rule for the other. Uh, and then there you go.